Good morning, gang. Happy Wednesday morning. Pouring rain here, which is fine by me. I'm not complaining one bit. This morning, I wanted to talk about something that doesn't get enough topic coverage in the prepper community, uh, and that's natural disasters. Now, we talk about hurricanes when they're coming, or we talk about tornadoes or something, but those are more weather events. I'm talking about something that's not climate change, right? Unless you're a complete moron, you'd call this, you know, inevitably we'll hear somebody say this is climate change. But in case you didn't see yesterday, uh, Yellowstone National Park, Biscuit Basin exploded. Uh, not huge, nobody died or anything like that, but there was certainly damage and it was one of the biggest explosions of the volcano, which Yellowstone basically is, uh, in about 10 years. Now, Yellowstone hasn't fully blown, if you will, in something like 70,000 years. And some people say, oh, it's inevitable, it's going to do it again. Sure, it's inevitable, it's going to do it again. It doesn't mean that this is the time that the big one's going to go off. However, this could be, all right? You know, remember Mount St. Helens back from 1980? We had the, the little fissures and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, the whole mountain disappeared one morning. Or at least the side of the mountain. Now, yeah, <clears throat> people were freaking out. Sure, I would too. All of a sudden, there's rocks being blown up in the air. Obviously, gravity brings them back down to the ground. <clears throat> you know, you don't want to get hit by a rock, so you're running out of there. You walk through afterwards, and you see in the pictures that the the pathway, you know, wood planking or whatever, was damaged, benches damaged, and everything. Nothing huge. Like I said, nobody was hurt or anything. But what happens if Yellowstone actually goes, okay, which is one of the, the biggest natural disaster threats in the United States? I mean, you look at earthquakes being our other one, right? You know, San Andreas Fault goes or any of the faults that are throughout the rest of the country, but San Andreas is the big one that everybody knows. Hmm, California drops off into the ocean, okay? <laughs> But if Yellowstone goes, Yellowstone affects everybody. And where I say everybody, I mean not just California falling into the ocean, the entire world. Okay. Yesterday I talked about why it's important to store food, that you never know what's going to happen next year. I'll give you this, okay. If Yellowstone did erupt, okay, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, pretty much completely or mostly wiped out. You'd have lava flows, you'd have ash, gas, rock pouring all over the states, okay? You'd see, again, the further away you get from a blast zone, I guess, if you will, the less of the impact. impact, But just in Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, you could expect ash fall up to 10 feet deep. Okay. At, um, sit in your house and look. That covers the entire first floor. If you're in your house, you aren't getting out. Okay. I mean, windows covered, everything like that. Once everything's over, maybe you could dig your way out, but that's it. Okay. You'd have all the lava flows, the pyroclastic flows that would burn anything in its way. We've seen that, again, Mount St. Helens, whatever. But the rest of the country would be impacted by falling ash. You know, of course, as fur further away you get from ground zero, the less it's going to be. But everything would be covered with ash including the sky, okay? This is the thing. If Yellowstone went, you have a worldwide event. The ash, the gas that gets up in the stratosphere, 
that's going to block sunlight. No sunlight, no growing anything. Okay. You know, we've all heard the stories, the year without a summer. This would be years without a summer. You're talking about just that gas and ash <clears throat> would cause a global temperature drop of up to 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, think about that summertime. You go, you know, hey, what? That wouldn't be so bad. Instead of it being 90 degrees in the summer, it'd be 80. Right. Okay. Let's say you live up north and there's no sunlight coming through. How much longer does that snow, that putrid acid snow, stay on the ground? That, I mean, this is what you're looking Get all that gas mixed in, in the stratosphere. That's going to kill everything. That's going to kill plant life as we know it. We can talk about EMPs. We can talk about nuclear war. We can talk about global economic crash. Those are all man-made. Those are all things that maybe can be stopped. That... If people collectively get their head on straight and realize, hey, we don't need to be borrowing money like crazy, we don't need to be crashing economies, we don't need to be going to wars, okay? Those things can all be stopped on the decision by people. No EMP. Somebody got to push that button for an EMP to go off or a nuclear warhead or multiple. Something like a super volcano going off is not anything we can do anything about. The only thing you can do about that is prep for it. Again, let's say you have 10 feet of ash around your house. You're ashed in, snowed in, okay? <clears throat> you can't get outside to get water, get plants. At that point, whatever you have in your house, in your apartment, in whatever, is all you got. We can, at that point, forget about solar power. That's not happening. You can forget about any stored water you have outside, depending on how far away you are. Maybe your well works, but <clears throat> electricity is... A thing of the past nearby for again further away you get chances are you don't have it as bad okay but if there's no sunlight and all the trees die and all the grass dies and all the plants die and all everything does the bigger issue you get is then where's the oxygen come from the only thing that you can do to prep for something like this is make sure that everything that you need is within the confines of where you plan on being in a situation like this. If you've got a whole bunch of stuff stashed out in the barn, you better be able to run out there and get that real quick before everything gets really bad. If you're really close, forget it. <clears throat> if it's out in the garage, if it's out in the shed, you're not getting to that, okay? Depending on how much and how close you are again, can your roof hold up the weight, All right? Would trees potentially fall? They're going to die. Which way are the trees going to fall? Of all the things to worry about, that's the one that is a complete wild card because we can't vote our way out of that. We can't shoot our way out of that. We just have to live through it, if possible. Pinball out.